Hi everyone, today I'm doing a little bit of a different video. I'm doing a flip through of these two secret garden books. This one I did in 2013 and within a few years afterwards and this one I've only just finished and I thought it would be really lovely to compare the two and uh, just see the differences between them and um, with regards to my colouring and things like that. Now I haven't looked at them and compared them so I'm really excited by having a look and seeing it myself. So to start with just to let this one is the older one and the paper is a bit different in this book to this one but I'm not sure that will make is an excuse for the uh, difference in colouring. You may also notice it's quite far away that this one has got some colouring in on the cover and this one hasn't. I did a little bit and then I changed my mind. I didn't actually finish it but all the other pictures inside are finished. So I'm just going to turn over and have a look at the very first page and, uh, and have a look at the difference. I find it quite interesting that these are the same colour in both and these which is really interesting but um, apart from that they, uh, they're quite different. And now we go on to the nameplate page. Oops. Ooh, have I turned over two at once? I have. So look, both pink, but this one's got some purple in as well. This one's done with polychromo, so it's a lot darker. This one's done with Stedler Ergosoft, as far as I can tell. It's a bit paler, but also, um, say the paper was a little bit more tricky to work with, but also I hadn't sort of built up um, my sort of strength in my hand, I guess. So here's the first picture, which is really interesting to see a huge contrast in what I've done. These are still quite um, similar colours, but uh, most of the rest is done really differently. And that's really interesting. And I've also done a background in this one, which I was too nervous to do any sort of backgrounds. I'm not sure if there are any anywhere in the book. And then we've got these. Look how very similar colour scheme is there how very interesting but this one here I was having an experiment I got my colour wheel out and I tried to do some contrasting colours and opposite colours but I'm not really sure how well I think that worked it's quite vivid and um, it was also done with the um, Derwent Nightfast pencils which go down really dark and this one's obviously much more of a, a mix of different colours I think this one's prettier to be honest and now we have the lovely owl now this one was done for a Valentine's competition and we had to incorporate a heart into the picture so that's so that's what I did with this one and this one I, I just did it however I wanted to do and here these are done with the um, Don't Want Light Fast pencils again so it's lovely intense colour whereas it's more of a mix of different colours I quite like how I've done autumn and green leaves all mixed up together now this one is one of my um, favourites of Johanna's pictures and here I went for a nice, um, e the colour to look quite similar, everything's got a sort of base in the sort of um, olivey green type colouring and the backgrounds as well has been done whereas this one's more of a mix of colours which is interesting. Now this one is really pale pastel colours, I'm not sure, I think that that's Ergosoft. Whereas this one is done with um, polychromos as far as I can tell and uh, much more vivid greens. Now this page here has got quite a lot of dirty smudges on. This was done with Derwent Lightfast and I used a layer of black under everything first to shade and then to colour on top. I wanted to try something a little bit different with the pencils but it looks like I should have put some fixative on because we've got a lot of black marks. Whereas this one I decided I wasn't going to do any green on the leaves so I did you see all the butterflies and, and um, chrysalises in green and kept all the leaves in different colours just to try and um, open my mind to doing things in a different colour so that was fun. Now with this page, in this page there's some differences. Here I did add inky details to the flowers as Johanna asks us to do. This one I didn't. I added a few with pencil in a few places but I didn't have the confidence to use a pen in my book so uh, I didn't and you can see the difference bright and colourful just one colour so that's interesting and this one I did a sort of rainbow um, effect which I think looks rather fun so it took me ages to do every leaf a different colour but I really love this rainbow door and uh, but with this one 
this is a pastel background I made it really easy for myself I did a pastel background did a darker pastel on the bush on the leaves and then just colored them all in the same color so that took probably took me about 10 times longer to do that than that and with this one I added this brick wall in the background and the grass and path I wanted to add some something a bit different to this picture and also not do the leaves green was my idea for that one now this one's quite um, oh have I turned over two? Yes, I have. Right now, you see here, I had no confidence in doing any of the extra drawing, so I just coloured in what was there. And it's quite fun, look, with the same colours for the pot and the leaves. Whereas this one, I traced these from the ones on this side and I drew in this wall. I can cope with drawing walls because you just use a ruler. And, uh, and put the sky in as well. So you can see there's a huge difference between those two, which is really interesting. Now here, look, experimenting with one color, which is quite fun. Oh, hang on, I think I've turned over two pages again. Yes, here we go. So that's what lovely pale pastel colors, which I rather like. Very different on this one. This page my son did, and he just didn't have the stamina to finish it so I didn't want to finish it either so that's my son's lovely picture there and so I did my own thing over here I didn't take the colours across and I didn't have the stamina to do a background either but I traced this kettle from Miniature Secret Garden and popped it in and then I looked at a picture of a real one and, and copied the um, light and shade to uh, to do that it was lovely fun doing that one and you see this one I didn't do any deta extra details it wasn't something that I... Uh, I felt confident to do. Now this picture, this is Chris Cheng. I did one of her tutorials for this so I can't take any credit for that. Um, and this one look I just chose to do blue which is really interesting and here I chose just to do orange whereas on this one I remember this is one of the first pictures I did in this book and I was experimenting with my silver pen. I don't know if you can even see the silver, there's only a few little bits of it around. So uh, that was the, uh, that was that one. And here, I just went for lots of colour, and uh, you can see the difference here. I wanted a background, and I just did two windows, and then I did some very easy pastel um, little circles to make that sky, um, rather than doing anything too detailed outside. And uh, also lots of bright colours, though, across the page. But I'm pretty sure that's done with Stedler Ergosoft pencils, although that isn't. And here you can still see the writing. I whited out the writing on that pot. Okay. Now this one was for a challenge. Oh my, look at that. So this was a challenge to do pink flowers um, on a colouring group event. So I did pink flowers. And look, there's pink flowers on this one too. And then I decided to do purple leaves to do it look really different. And this has got purple leaves. That's fascinating. But I like this uh, rainbow trunk. How interesting. Whereas I, I did mine in this turquoise. I think I was channeling a bit of Andrea Dean in that uh, picture. And then we have the bugs. Lots of different colours. Um, and what I've done is it's quite random. Whereas here, each bug that looks like this is the same colour as each other. And I tried to make these look like gems. Whereas, <coughs> excuse me, whereas these don't. Go across. Now these are very different. The colours are much more vivid on the flowers on this because I used I used a mixture of polychromos. I think they were polychromos actually for all of them for this. I'm not sure what I used there, but I decided to use purple background and it actually works quite well with the orange and yellow, I think. This one I didn't do a background, but I did some silver and gold. It might be hard to see um, on the dots and things. Now uh, this wishing well I've done loads of times because I've got the two copies of the artist edition which it's in and I've got so I have been experimenting with lots of different ways of doing it. This was probably my first attempt. I love these multicoloured stones, how very interesting and it's all quite random and there is a background you may not be able to see it there's a little bit of pink behind here and there's a bit of orange or something there so there's a bit of a background there but here I did a pastel on top of everything and I didn't like it so I coloured over it in pink pencil and then outlined everything in white I just wanted to try something really different because I've done this page lots of times 
And here we have the butterfly page. Now I haven't drawn anything on this page. Um, I just coloured in what was there. And the same on this one. But it's interesting I've got I've got a rainbow going on through here with a rainbow butterfly, but here's a lot more random, but there are still some rainbow touches, which is interesting. Whereas here I've kept to the same colours. Very interesting. Okay, and here is this page. So I've stuck to one colour, and again, look, green flowers and pink leaves to try and do something different. And I've done a background on this one, which is really interesting. It's quite uneven, but I still find backgrounds really hard. This one's easy, it was a pen. So uh, it was a Posca pen. Now we have this page. Now look at that, different colours around. And this is all quite multicoloured. I have done it symmetrically though, because this is a symmetrical pattern. And this one is done, this is a pencil background, and uh, I just wanted it to look like a normal maze. But this one was for a red, grey and black challenge. This was a, I've only just finished this picture, it's the last one I've done in the book. And uh, I really didn't know what to do with it because I wanted to make it look a bit different. So I did this red around the outside and then greys in the middle. I was going to do black Posca all the way around the edge, but I was so desperate to just finish the book and get on with this video, I lazily just didn't do it. Well, that's a really lovely, bright and colourful page. This one, on the other hand, was a one colour challenge to do brown. So I did the sort of orangey brown for the flowers and a darker brown for the leaves and I just used two pencils. So uh, it was a little bit different. And uh, as you can see with this one, I haven't done the butterfly, which is interesting, but I made it nice and bright and jolly and cheerful. Now these, these birds I've done quite a lot of times as well. Again, in the, I think it's in the artist edition, I'm not sure. So this one, look, I've attempted a black background. You can see it's not very even, the pen has a much better effect. But um, that's interesting, I've kept everything symmetrical, which I have on this one as well. But I've got a gold pen background on this, I don't know, it's always so hard to see gold. Um, and uh, got quite different colours in this one. Now here, this is a graphite HB pencil. I just wanted to try something really different, so that was quite fun. And here, I was just in the mood for putting colour on paper and filling in boxes and not doing anything complex shading. I have did this quite recently. I was just in the mood for just getting some colour down. So it's quite plain and simple. Sometimes we just need to do that. Now this one is interesting. Here I've done a green background. Again, it's not that even, but it was it's quite fun. But I feel that the foreground doesn't pop out from the green, particularly the leaves, they all blend in. So I could have thought a bit more about what I was doing with background there, but here I cheated. This is a pastel background. It took me about 10 minutes and then black Posca pen. It was so easy, but I just didn't know what else to do because these ones here, you're supposed to fill in all the inky details and I just wasn't up for that. There was so much intricate work, so I just, uh, I just colored over it. Now we have this page. So they're quite, this was one of the first ones I did in this book. So it's got a bit of a background in there. I wanted, I was experimenting with, and I really like these, this pink color. So I had to go with that and try to put some pink into the leaves. And uh, this one, I just, it's the leaves look are quite similar in color, which is interesting, but I didn't do a background. And this one, look, I went for red, which is nice, but here, this this is my Derwent Light Fast. They give a really intense colour. I mean, obviously, there's lots of layers of colour on there as well. And I also looked up butterflies on my search engine and tried to make these look more realistic. I, I wanted a more real look to the page. Hmm, that's interesting. So this these are so different. That's fascinating. So look, I've stuck to red and yellow and green and then and, and tried to do a black background on that one. This one I decided I was going to do a black background but I just did a black outline and kept it white so it would all pop out more with all these vibrant colours. This is Derwent Nightfast pencil so very vibrant. And I like this, what I did here. So I outlined each of the flowers in a dark pink and I filled them in with purple. It's really interesting. 
and but here I did something totally different I just split the page in four with a ruler left these white in the background these are coloured in a felt pen I think which I sh could do with another layer but it started to show through the page because this paper this isn't this is a fairly old book still so the paper isn't as good as Johanna's books now a fantastic paper but this didn't quite hold up and uh, I wanted to try and fade the colour through the flowers as well so starting dark and going lighter oh it's the sunflower next so very similar um, ideas with the sunflower um, no background um, I just um, I was going to do one and then I bottled out because there's so much background but you can see the colours are just more vibrant on this one than they on on here and the lanterns have very different um, and very interesting I didn't attempt to do any I did a little bit of shading on here and here but not a lot and a bit of um, yellow in the background but here the candle I looked up a candle and tried to copy it and shade it and make and emphasize it a lot more I had a lot of fun with that one and then this is pastel this bit went horribly wrong where I used some fixative and it ran across and smudge uh, had a black drip everywhere I had to try and hide that but um, I still am really happy with that picture now this was the disaster I coloured this in quite lightly with Ergosoft pencils I think and then I went over it with dark blue pastel over the whole thing and of course because I hadn't burnished the pencil into the page enough it just smudged into all the pencil and everything looks blue. I was quite disappointed and uh, I felt quite upset that I'd ruined the picture but um, I learned from this experience when I did this one and my background is pencil and it took a lots of layers and a very long time and it isn't smooth but um, I, uh, I I felt feel better about this picture and I had to go at some gold on the lanterns and things like that so that was good fun but I find nighttime pictures tricky you have to think hard about your colors if you've got a dark background you need things to really pop out of the page okay now that's quite an autumnal feel to that one this one was a was a I did it just before Halloween so I wanted a real Halloweeny feel to it so I've got all my autumnal colours and I did the spiders in green to make them look a little bit scary not too scary and then did the black background so all the oranges could pop out um, so that was fun and this one is quite interesting because it's quite autumnal although we've got these pink flowers now the shed one I really I really enjoy doing this picture I love doing blackberries and you can see I coloured these and tried to leave a little white white dot but these I actually added dots on with a white Posca pen and I've got some nicer colours than I had then and uh, and I did my shed blue I still try and I also try to make the stones reflect the light which is interesting although some of them are at the top and some at the bottom it's not quite giving the effect I wanted but anyway that's interesting oh another um, multicoloured tree which is fun so we've got all the primary colours going on in that one this one we've got more plain colours and this one was a real experiment so this is pastel so I did light pink to dark pink light blue to dark blue and then I coloured the um, I don't know if I coloured after there's no fixative on there um, and I try to sort of coordinate the colours of the circle whereas this one I kept I tried to make bright and vibrant I was going to scan it in and use it for a birthday card but unfortunately it's very hard to scan the books of this size so it didn't work but I still had fun with the page now I have the lovely scarecrow now this guy he's very orange um, he's quite there's no shading very much in the leaves or the strawberries which is quite interesting and this one Again, there's not a lot of shading in the uh, in the clothing, but I wanted something much more interesting and, and bright. And I tried to put a bit of a background in, so we've got sky and water, hills and, and field, and all the soil in there to make it a bit more um, fun. And I've got a lot more shading in the leaves and the berries, so that's interesting. And this one, the massive contrast. You can see this is just quite... I've just There's no shading at all in this picture. The, there's a bit of red here that's come that's transferred from that page and uh, apart from in those leaves there's a little bit whereas here I was inspired by cherry colours 
um, I think she's on Instagram and she's absolutely brilliant. She did a fantastic version of this with lots of blossoms and I was inspired by that and uh, I did something which looks absolutely nothing like her picture but I was really pleased with the um, effect that it had. Uh -huh, that's nice and bright and colourful. This one was done for a challenge, um, an event in the colouring group. Um, there's a member, Maggie Cook, she does fire and ice colours a lot, which are beautiful. And the challenge was to do something in that style. So I thought, well, I'll do the leaves in one and the flowers in the other. So that's, that's where that came from. We have a bit of a pastel background on this one, which is interesting because there's also a pastel background on this one. But obviously extremely different um, ideas. Um, so this one, where um, Johanna's left little areas for black to be filled in, I've done it quite lightly, whereas here I use black Posca pen, so it really shows up a lot more. And I just wanted here something quite moody, I don't know why, I just wanted to try, I saw someone had done a version of this and it looks stunning and it was darker colours, so I took that idea and mine looks nothing like theirs but I just had a go with darker colours and then putting the white pen, that's white, white, um, um, white gel pen. That's interesting, look at those rainbow colours again in here. I had a bit of a rainbow obsession, didn't I? But we've got a bit of a background attempted on this one, and lots of colour, but here I had a completely different idea, gold and silver, bronze for the uh, dragonfly and gemstones for the flower middles. I had such fun doing this page with trying out the... I've always found silver really difficult and I followed um, a technique in a Helen Ellison book and uh, had a lot of fun with that one. Now, oh, look at my slugs. I wanted to make them look... I'm sure I wanted to make them look happy and friendly so they're pink and purple and blue. And here... We have a more realistic brown slugs and snails, but I've done a pastel background here and I tried to make it look quite random. So there's a bit of orangey brown in some areas and things like that. It looks a bit dirty in places. My dark green pastel looks a bit dirty. So but there we go. Oh, another rainbow maze, but done in a slightly easier, quicker way. And another rainbow door. How interesting. But this one is a lazy maze because I just used a pastel across the page and then coloured every leaf the same colour. And then I used the Posca pens to do the um, these. Um, the mushrooms are coloured in with pencil and then I did the door. It's still got quite a lot of green showing through that door. And there is some, the key is in a silver pen as is the um, handle on the door. Oh, I like this one. This is, uh, I've always enjoyed colouring this picture, but you can see quite a progression. Colours very, very similar. So all the same, a slightly darker green for this and a lighter one for here. Obviously the grapes are the same colour and the um, blackberries. And here on this one, I didn't, on, I've done these as little chilies because I've seen other people do that. On this one, I didn't know about that. And I've done no background. Um, interestingly the apples are I did my apples red only on this one we've got more we've got a shine on the apples we don't have that one here and uh, the butterflies look are the same color orange blue and red absolutely fascinating the pots are pur both purple there and both sort of orangey there and those two are both red and I ha didn't look at the picture when I did it that's really interesting. Obviously, I can understand why the leaves might be the same sorts of colours, but that's really interesting. Although I've got a blue watering can here and a wheelbarrow. Look, blue wheelbarrow. Wow. OK, so this picture, this one was a Chris Chang tutorial. So that's a cheat picture, but uh, she is brilliant. This one obviously wasn't, um, but I've done a try to do a little bit of a background. I'm trying to I think it's pencil, it's quite hard to tell, um, and I've kept some of the colours the same to try and make it look more interesting and consistent. And then this one is quite a sort of mix of colours with the cans being the same in a blue shed. This one I try to use the same colours from here, so to make it, so the, the uh, watering cans are very similar colour, 
and um, some of the other colours that within the flowers I used within the flowers on this page as well to try and make it look a match because these two pages match but up here they don't so you can see I've used virtually the same colours but just in such a different way so we've got a blue background the flowers are all pink whereas I've got a mix of pink and purple we've got orange fish we've got green lily pads but look at the difference this is Ergosoft no this is Ergosoft pencils this is Polychromos pencils and here I try to match the colours with this page to make sort of tie it in together um, whereas here is um, we've still got the same colour fish and flowers so actually it looks fairly um, consistent as well but you can see the difference the the sky and the water are coloured in but you probably can't even see because it's very faint I didn't have a lot of confidence so it's really interesting this one I took some inspiration from Chris Cheng's version which on the bubbles and things like that and some of the colours that I used I think um, this one um, I just did myself um, and I'm looking see that frog looks really similar except mine's got orange feet here and this one that I did here hasn't but the lily pads are the same colour as the frog whereas here I've done a slightly different colour to give it some contrast which is interesting but uh, the, and here the background you can see I've got a harsh end to the background I prefer this one which I've tried to blend out I could have done a better job but it looks a little bit more natural somehow I don't know now this is my absolutely favourite Johanna Basford page ever and uh, I've got some postcards that I've done with this on as well and I remember watching a video of how to do the flowers with this um, to make it look like the petals are turned out at the ends and bent in towards the centre with this sort of light shine I remember watching a video on that back in sort of 2014 or whatever it was to do that so I had a go but and I've done a similar effect on these but you can see after a lot more practice I think this one looks better and the flower middle as well so that's interesting and I chose to leave this with nothing in but the centres are quite similar in the fact that I've tried to make them look 3D so that's really interesting and I've done it I thought I could do if I did a yellow background you wouldn't see the white paper so much but I I can and here you see I've drawn in this bit now I say drawn in I traced bits of this onto here so there was no drawing it was just tracing so I had a go and I can see the difference between mine but uh, there we go now here you can see there's been a lot of transfer of colour across um, I wasn't always putting a piece of paper in between so um, I didn't know about that um, doing that putting a paper between the pages so the idea with this one was to make the centres look like gemstones and uh, just to do each one a different colour and here I've just done a random different colour on each one but you can see quite a difference between the how dark this is compared to this and I think that a lot of that's to, just to do with confidence and building up my muscles in my hand. Now this is a really interesting contrast to pages this one I did the pastel background after you can tell because the yellow has gone slightly green on that flower there um, and I didn't have the confidence to do anything extra with the page so in the end I didn't know what to do so I did this past this is a pastel background as far as I can tell I'm not sure actually I think so and then I just did black pencil but I've only done one layer of black pencil so you can see it looks very grey now this one I traced these trees from a different page in the book I traced every flower from a different page in the book and then um, just coloured them in so it was just tracing now this one you can see I had a go at doing some drawing which was really good um, for uh, me to have a go at that but I wasn't very happy with the flowers so in the end I didn't colour them in whereas what I did with this one is I traced um, parts from this page onto this page even and put extra bees and things in which again I traced I didn't draw Uh, tree houses are quite different the, the, there's not much shading on the on the bark there's a lot more here different colours obviously but still the yellow light at the window and the silhouette of the cat which is interesting and these peacocks are quite different you can see this was done with um, let me look polychromos 
And there's a little bit of background behind the tail but this one has got a lot more what I did with this one was I actually looked at a picture of a real peacock and tried to copy it I used um, my Derwent um, um, light fast pencils for this and there's a lot of white gel pen and things like that on it for this bit here and around the eyes and all sorts of places so uh, that was uh, uh, it looks quite different but you can see the colouring is quite similar and the flowers are a bit different as well now these two pages you can see I've done them quite differently I rather like the white flowers with the orangey middles that's nice whereas I went for matching pages and I just made this into a frame on the outside so it looked a bit more interesting and filled in some of that space and it's dead easy to draw with a ruler. And I traced these butterflies from one of the other pages and popped them in and uh, did a little bit of a background on that. And here again I've got quite a random set of colours and actually that it's not done symmetrically. It's interesting that I've done some brown leaves. In fact I've done all the little leaves brown and the bigger ones green. Uh, that's interesting and now we come to the last page so we've got a blue and look these leaves aren't even I remember I just wanted to do a rough outline and I didn't colour everything in that was the effect I was going for and um, let's have a look ah yes Holbein pastel pencils so this is the pastel colour set from the Holbeins as a tin of 12 so I used that for those to test them out um, which was interesting. I found shading with them quite difficult but I think the key I think is probably to use them with other pencils as well as I've only got 12 I have to use them with other sets and to, so to do darker details with a different pencil and the heart so this one as you can see it's just a sort of greeny um, yellow and the purple and I've done a similar thing here where I've just stuck to a colour scheme so there we go, I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you can see um, how after quite a few years how I've changed in what I've coloured and you know the way I colour and um, how my confidence is built and how I'm trying lots of different things. So I hope that helps you whether you're a beginner or whether you've been colouring for a long time like me. I hope that it helps you to see that you know improvements do come and um, it just takes time and patience and learning and hopefully lots of enjoyment along the way. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and happy colouring.